Hello again and welcome to another short series of videos uh, based on the Trinity Classical Guitar Examinations 2020 to 2023. This time we're going to be looking at grade four uh, and the first piece that I've chosen is a modern piece uh, by a composer called Martin Fogel and this one is called Village Blackbird Blues. So there we have it, Village Blackbird Blues. Now, I'm guessing when I say this, but I think some of that, certainly some of the shapes, may be based on uh, the song Blackbird by the Beatles. I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute uh, when I come to the section where that really does sort of stand out in terms of the shapes that are used, okay? Now, key-wise, the key signature suggests C major or A minor, okay? Simply because there aren't any sharps or flats at the beginning of each line. However, the sound of this piece suggests G major. It starts on G and it finishes on a G chord, okay? So it's very much uh, the sound of G major okay it's in 4-4 four, four, so four crotchet beats in a bar but this one goes through many different time changes and rhythm changes if you look on line 3 it goes from 4-4 four, four in bar 8 and then bar 9 suddenly changes to 3-8. So we've got 4-4, four, four, four crotchet beats in a bar, to 3-8, three, three quaver beats in a bar, and then at the end of that line, back to 2-4, two, two crotchet beats in a bar, then back to 3-8, then back to 2-4, then back to 3-8, then back to 2-4, and then eventually 3-8 back into 4-4, four, four, a nice regular 4-4 four, four beat. Okay, so just be very aware of that. Um, and also, just going back to the key, it, it doesn't it doesn't follow the expected key set, the sounds that you might expect. Okay, so when you practice it, uh, when you get used to the sound, that very very important and that will help you okay all right uh, now throughout this piece sustaining the notes is really important if you look at the very first section you can see the bass notes are all semi breves sustained notes and then minims and then a tied note okay so it's important that those bass notes are left ringing. <coughs> Excuse me, the top notes. Now this, what I tend to use finger-wise, because there aren't any right-hand fingers written, 
I tend to use my first finger on D, the fourth string, my third finger on the second string, B. However, sometimes I do change in that I'll play the bass note with my thumb and then I'll take my thumb over to the fourth string and use my middle finger on the second string. Either way, doesn't matter as long as those notes are sustained, okay? Um, and it might be as well that you, you just have to, again, just watch your left hand position, right? You might have to bring your wrist forward and get those fingers upright. Okay, if you let them fall, you're going to catch those strings. So if you're getting that, just bring your hand forward, swing your wrist round to get that nice clear sound, okay? Again, common in this piece, if you look, uh, the first one we'll look at is the end of line one, bar four, the first two notes, F to G, is a slur. Hammer down that third finger. Now, if you're not used to slurs, practice that. They've got to take the nice even rhythm of the quavers. So if you imagine playing the quavers, The slur, when you hammer on the G, has to be the same rhythm, all right? The tendency is, if you're not used to, to slurring, when you first do it, is that the tendency is that you go too quick, all right? So it's not that. Think how quavers would sound, okay? And the slurs carry on throughout this piece. Again, the beginning of line three uh, and also the end of line three. Okay, so just watch those. Um, and then really it's a case of practice the first bit, that nice regular 4-4. Four, four. Okay, and then when you come to bar 9 and it goes to 3-8, you can see on the music the right hand fingers are written P-I-M. So there, using Tarando strokes, very important. Okay, to get that arpeggio effect. Okay, so again, practice that very slowly until you're absolutely happy with that. And again, sustain those those bass notes. So three eight, three quaver beats in a bar. So the bass notes are all worth one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. If you don't, the piece will have that tendency to sound, the way I describe it is always, it sounds lumpy. It's not smooth. Okay, so again, practice that really slowly. Um, Bar 21, which is line 5, you have a half bar at position 5, a slur there. Alright, so stay in that position. Again, practice that very slowly, get used to that slur. Take your hand off, drop down, and just come down. Staccato G. Okay, so, so you get that bum, bum. Okay, and then a long G. And then you get that pause on the bass note G. So all the notes are sustained. Just pause that, that gives you then time to change position up to position eight. And this is the bit really that I was talking about in terms of relating it to um, the Beatles song, Blackbird. There's a section in that song where it uses this progression. Until finally 
we're going back to G. Okay, so it's very similar. <laughs> So position changes, eight, six, five, three, bar 30 in the bass. Now this little note with a line going through it, that's what they call an acciacatura. And basically with an acciacatura, the Italian meaning of that is literally crushed in. So in other words, play that note as quick as possible. So what you have to do is you slide from fret one on the fifth string up to the second fret. All right, don't drag it out as quick as you can and straight onto the chord. So again, practice that. That's the kind of thing that I love because I can send pupils away and I can say, go and practice that. Drive everybody in the house mad, sitting there going, until eventually it's like, oh no, no, play something else. Okay, no, I can't. Mr. Merritt said to practice that. All right, okay. So that, okay, practice it get used to that because you'll come across quite a few of those so try and remember that name it's a it's a it's a, it's a funny name aki akachura okay but crushed in as quick as possible okay um and then really dynamically the dynamics speak for themselves now um starts piano so soft there's plenty of crescendos and diminuendos and then it's a mixture of MPs, MFs, Fs, there's a double P. Um, and then right at the end, uh, the second to last bar, just be careful there. Where you get that writ. So if you remember writ, short for ritenuto, and writ is suddenly slow down. Okay, so suddenly put those brakes on. at the end pause so don't be quick to take your hand off just let that note sustain that a little bit longer just for a really nice ending okay so that's the first piece village blackbird blues so once again happy practicing <laughs>